Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God, of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent his two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Who in all good delight 
Christ, thou good and gracious King. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children make sweet as a Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. An order for morning prayer. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. A reading from Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me.
A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 21. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The, the noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the church, the holy church acclaims you. Father of, of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship 
and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass until I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See. The hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword and perish by the sword. Would you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, Fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they say testify? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming 
on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore at his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and, he's, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, when the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? See to yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason that they, the field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what has been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one was on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set the price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. But when, when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not even a, to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner to the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? Barabbas. Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Let him be crucified. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. 
they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and altar twisting some thorns, thorns into a crown, they put on, it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man of Cy from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put a charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who had passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many woman, women were there also, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which had been hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along the way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
The verse which I just shared with you is from one of the very first Messianic Jewish songs which I encountered, and was composed by one of the best-known musicians of that movement, Paul Wilbur. I quickly grew to love this song. It seems to be a surprising mix of major and minor, of happy and sad. It seems entirely appropriate for today. When I think of that crowd which celebrated the arrival of our Lord and which welcomed him into the holy city of Jerusalem on that first day of the week, I cannot help but recall that they were Messianic Jews. At that point, there were no Christians. There were those who loved and followed Jesus, those who were anxious, those who anxiously prayed for the coming of the Messiah. Though there was no unity of thought as to what the coming of Messiah, Messiah would mean, and there were those who were afraid and threatened by the movement which Jesus had begun. The latter group were happy with the way that things were, or else had made some accommodation with those in power and were afraid of change. For each of these disparate groups, Jesus had provoked a crisis. His words and actions forced them into making a choice. He confronted power, injustice, and oppression. That is never a safe thing to do. There is always a price to be paid for those who call out for justice, righteousness, and peace. The difficult thing for those of us who celebrate the transition from Lent into Holy Week and is that, as Paul Harvey famously reminds us, we know the rest of the story. It is challenging for us to remain focused in the moment and to allow the events of Holy Week to unfold for us. It is almost as if, though, we need to deny ourselves the knowledge of what is coming in order to really enter into each of the transformative experiences of this week. The current celebration in most of the liturgical churches is an uneasy balancing act between two worlds. We celebrate both Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday on the same day. The two celebrations are quite unique and, in a way, complementary, yet there is a level in which they remain distinct. Because the tradition of reading the Passion on this Sunday was intended to prepare us for Holy Week by giving us a kind of heads up about the importance of each of the days of the Paschal Triduum, Monday Thursday, Good Friday, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the celebration of Palm Sunday somehow seemed to get lost in the mix. The two gospel readings which we hear today began with palms, but they move and quite quickly into table, garden, cross, tomb, empty tomb in a garden, and post-resurrection appearance. It feels like a kind of marathon. By the time that we finish reading and listening to the Passion, we've forgotten about the beginning. Palm Sunday is overlooked and forgotten in light of what follows. Today, I would like to reflect with you on what the events of Palm Sunday might have meant to each of those groups I mentioned at the beginning, and on what all of this could mean to us, here and now. The Liturgy of the Palms, which tells the story of the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, shares a most fascinating psalm, Psalm 118. Dr. Grant Petrie, a renowned Roman Catholic biblical scholar, explains that for first century Jews, this psalm had become identified with hopes for the Messiah. And so, whenever the psalm was prayed, it was connected with hopes for deliverance and rescue by God. That literally is what the word Hosanna means. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna, Lord, Send us now success. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. In the Gospel of Matthew, there is a slight twist to the words. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The unruly crowd which meets Jesus welcomes him as a descendant of the house of David, and this has clear messianic overtones. Each king of Israel had been anointed with blessed oil on the day of his coronation. Thus, the literal connection to the word Mashiach, which means anointed one. The surprise, though, is that the reference to palms had another connotation. Psalm 118 cries for the Messiah to be greeted with a procession of branches, or palms, which will ultimately lead to the temple, where he will offer sacrifice on the altar. Some understood this to mean that the Messiah would also be a priest. In any case, the very optimistic and hopeful liturgy which unfolded on Palm Sunday reverberated with clear hopes the crowd repeatedly cried out, Hosanna, save us, rescue us, deliver us. I wonder what the followers of Jesus thought about all of this. I suppose that many of them were excited that the rabbi whom they loved so dearly appeared to finally be getting the honor, respect, and acknowledgement which they thought he so profoundly deserved. This over-the-top welcome must have seemed too good to be true. They began this Holy Week full of hope. They had made it. Jesus had made it. He was now a power to be reckoned with. For them, this may have seemed like an inauguration. Now they waited excitedly to see what Jesus was going to do and how he was going to begin to push for the changes which had been at the heart of his prophetic ministry for several years. I can only imagine, too, in a more self-serving way, they were wondering what their own reward would be for having faithfully followed him from obscurity to this meteor meteoric rise to fame. Among the others who greeted Jesus that day, there were some who hoped for the coming of the Messiah for other reasons. One group were incipient rebels and revolutionaries. They had daily suffered the abuses and cruelty of the Roman occupation and were filled with a zeal for independence and freedom. Like the Maccabees before them, they longed to throw off the brutal yoke of the oppressor. They wanted to restore the throne of David, or at the very least, political and military independence. There was a desire to return to the glory days of David and Solomon, when Israel had been at the peak of power and influence. For this group, Jesus showed promise to become a rallying force, which would unite all the people into a rebel army. There was a second group of onlookers that day. These were the poor, the needy, the broken dregs of society who were struggling to just survive in a world in which they felt overlooked, forgotten, ignored, and devalued. They found in Jesus good news, which seemed too good to be true. God did love them and care for them, after all. They actually did have value and worth. They were not so com much concerned with political and military concerns, they literally longed for enough bread and water to make it through the day. In Jesus, they had found someone who spoke kindly to them, who was unafraid to touch them, filthy and sick as they often were. They had also found someone who made the lame walk, the blind see, and the deaf hear. He had restored dead Lazarus to life. Jesus was not afraid to interact with women, with lepers, with foreigners, and with sinners. His love was inclusive, welcoming, and generous. 
For the first time, they were able to imagine a future in which they too would be included, loved, and valued. Because it was, and Matthew is quite clear about this, the final days of preparation for the pilgrim festival of the Passover, Jerusalem was filled with Jewish tourists from all over the Mediterranean. On the sidelines, watching all this, were the powers that be, the Roman authorities, the party of the high priest, the Sanhedrin, and the other Jewish religious authorities. There were also curious and alarmed representatives of competing Jewish sects, Pharisees, Essenes, and numerous others whose identities have been lost to history. Each of these groups viewed Jesus as a threat, someone who was in danger of upsetting the cart as he had earlier upset the commerce of the temple. This was the moment in which they realized that these dangerous messianic hopes must be crushed, and the sooner the better, before things really got out of control. There is a fascinating lyric from Jesus Christ Superstar in which Judas attempts to reason with Jesus and to warn him. I am frightened by the crowd, for we are getting much too loud, and they'll crush us if we go too far. The good news for us at the beginning of this Holy Week is that in Jesus the Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Son of David, God has truly come to us to love us, to forgive us, to heal us, to strengthen and to empower us. God has come to enable us to become a force for good, for inclusion, and for generous loving service to those in need. God has come to break down walls and barriers. God has come to establish justice, equality, and freedom. God has come to lift up the lowly, the forgotten, the poor, the hungry, the widow and orphan. God has come to welcome the foreigner, the stranger, the other. In God's family and in God's house, all will be welcome. And so, like those who found new hope in Jesus, we cry out, Hosanna, Son of David, save us, rescue us, deliver us. In the days to come, we will walk with our Lord through the streets of Jerusalem. On Monday, Thursday, we will gather in the upper room to celebrate the last Passover of Jesus and his last supper. Here, Jesus will institute a new Passover and will identify himself with the bread and the wine of the Seder. He will wash the feet of his disciples and give us a new commandment that we must love and serve each other. We will garden with him to the Garden of Gethsemane, the Garden of the Oil Press on the Mount of Olives. We will fall asleep as Jesus struggles to accept the cost of love and service. After a time of anguished prayer, he will surrender in love and absolute trust to his Father. On Good Friday, we will be in the crowd loudly shouting, Crucify him, as Jesus is tried, condemned, humiliated, tortured, and then publicly executed. Or else, we will be among those who are frightened and who run away. On Holy Saturday, the Sabbath, we will gather at the tomb, numb, cried out, heartbroken, and full of anguish, as all our hopes seem to crash around us in defeat. That night, at the beginning of the first day of the week, the day of the new creation, we will gather in the dark to welcome the light of Christ. We will follow the the paschal candle, the new pillar of fire, to the altar. We will hear the exultant, that hymn of deliverance, that hymn recounting salvation history, that him which welcomes our Messiah to save us and to deliver us, here and now. We will join with sisters and brothers 
who will, through the saving waters of holy baptism, cross through the sea into the new exodus. And we will hear that glorious proclamation, Christ is risen, Christ is truly risen. We will join with those women and other disciples at the empty tomb to encounter our risen Lord. In this Holy Week, we will face obstacles. In a time of pandemic, we will not be able to assemble together as God's beloved children. Many among us will be ill and in danger. Some, sadly, will be dying. Others will be risking their own safety to care for those who are ill. Doctors, nurses, health care personnel, first responders, and family members. This year, as every year, we will also be called to reflect on the ways in which this annual celebration of the core mysteries of our faith as followers of Jesus has been twisted over so many centuries into anti-Christian acts. For centuries, these holy days were the most terrifying and fearful ones which our Jewish sisters and brothers experienced in so many parts of the world. After hearing the proclamation of the Passion, Christians ran into the ghettos and shackles and began pogroms of violence and hatred against the very family of Jesus. I conclude with a final thought, which so often has reminded me of what Holy Week and of what Christianity is ultimately all about. Holy Week is not so much about how much Jesus suffered as it is about how much Jesus loved. Baruch Haba. Blessed is Jesus, our Messiah, who comes, who comes to save, deliver, heal, and restore us. In God's name, Bashem Adonai. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our upon him our nature 
and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. As we journey this week with Christ and celebrate the Paschal mystery of his death and resurrection, let us pray to God in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, saying, hear our prayer. For the church, remembering Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, for Andrew and Raymond, our priests, Fran, our deacon, and for St. James Church, Dundiff, that we may be strengthened to take up our cross, follow in his way, and share in his redeeming work. We pray to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. For this parish family, especially Pete and Nina Oleman, Peter Oleman, Bobby Oleman, Thomas and Barbara Pacioli, Dimitri, Kathleen, George, and Juliet Papa Giorgio, Timothy and Margaret Peters, and Tyler, Rachel, Trayson, and Cecilia Peters, that we who are called to be the community of the crucified one may empty ourselves as Christ did, serving in unselfish love. We pray to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. For our several ministries, especially the Pastoral Care Committee and our Mission of the Month, ARC Community Meal, we pray to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. For those who hold us in their prayers, especially Sister Marcia Anchoris, we pray to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. For all those in positions of leadership, especially Donald, our president, Tom, our governor, Sal, our mayor, and all in positions of public trust, that they may have wisdom, insight, and courage to act swiftly and compassionately for the common good. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and all those who bravely put their lives on the line to care for others, that they may find strength and hope in the God of life. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. For those who are quarantined, anxious, and separated from those they love, and for those who love and care for them, remembering especially Uliana, Nancy, Carol, Ray, Karen, Rosemary, the Welch family, Carolyn, Bill, Anne-Marie, Carol, and those known to us. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. For those 
who have died, remembering especially Joseph and Margaret Corona Sr., Kenneth and Mary Kohler, Mary Ann Corona, Anthony Alfonso, George Watson, and those known to us. That they may rest in Christ and be raised into his glory, we pray to you, O God. Hear our prayer. I invite your prayers and thanksgivings. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary the God-bearer and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord, our God. Most loving Father, whose will it is for us is to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing but the loss of you, and to cast all our care on you who care for us. Preserve us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, that no clouds of this mortal life may hide from us the light of that love which is immortal, and which you have manifested to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O sacred head, so wounded, defiled and put to scorn, O kingly head, surrounded with mocking crown of thorn, what sorrow must thy grandeur can death thy bloom deflow? O countenance whose splendor the hosts of heaven adore. The General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.